What can you tell us about that the encrypted communication? Cracking the code is easier said than done. Encryption is essential. Decrypt it and find out what it is. Another layer of security. Encryption is essential to human rights. What encryption is about is protecting data. It's protecting information, whether you're buying something on the internet, whether someone is holding your personal medical data. So more and more data is being encrypted. We expect that our information is going to be kept private. And so without that trust, the, the global gears of the digital economy would come to a screeching halt. The grand discussion is about encryption. What is it? What does it mean? And where are we as Americans, as citizens of the world, where are we going with regard to this important question? The idea of hiding a message or keeping a message secret has been around since the early days of humankind. I think as long as a secret was intended to be secret, there was always ways to try to hide that or keep others from reading it. The simplest way to explain it is the kind of code writing that a child might use in school, where you have a number substitute for a letter. So instead of A, B, C, you write one, two, three. And the key with all code writing and encryption is you have to have what they call the key. That uh, algorithm or that document, which tells you how to translate, let's say, the symbol for a number into what it represents in terms of an actual letter. Modern day encryption as we know it today ultimately started back in the 1970s when mathematicians created encryption algorithms that used extremely large prime numbers. Public key encryption. If you take very, very large prime numbers, there's a way in which you can transmit a number, or rather message, in one way, and anybody can do it, but only a person who has the key that matches the particular set of numbers to a particular other set of numbers is able to decrypt it. As we've gotten more and more computing power, encryption has gotten better and better. But it also means, and here's where the problem comes in, people whom we really do have a right to know what they're doing, criminals, terrorists, proliferators, traffickers, they also can use encryption to cover their messages, to cover their trail, to cover their tracks, to cover their crimes. And so we've got this grand debate going on now. How much encryption is good to protect most of the citizens of the world, and at what expense in terms of what law enforcement can and can no longer do. If we think about data today, data either sits on our devices, on our phones or our laptop computers, and then sometimes it moves. And so in modern encryption, what we've done is we've encrypted both data at rest and data in motion. And the combination of those two is what's called end-to-end -end encryption. With massive computing power that we now have available, we can encrypt messages in such a way that certainly theoretically and in most cases practically, the encryption is unbreakable. You, you can't get into the message. Only the sender and the intended recipient is going to be able to understand what's in the content of the message. Like with anything else, I mean, technology can be both a help and a threat to our security. It can be a help in the case of encryption, because now, if someone gets a hold of a communication or they hack into our data, they can't read it. You have to balance. And the balance favors strong encryption rather than weak encryption. Strong encryption protects almost everybody. Weak encryption can be useful to law enforcement in a relatively small number of cases, but only at the risk of making everybody more vulnerable. So it's about balancing in a way that protects the most security for the most people.